there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Church, none of us are perfect. We all have our own shortcomings. Maybe today we come to church with a heavy and burdened heart. But let this song and this morning remind us of how strong and kind our Savior is. Let us be reminded of, this, of His love that may strengthen each longing heart this morning. Let's ready our hearts to come into His presence today. of our God. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. So, lay down your burdens, lay down your sins, and confess each and every one of our shortcomings to Jesus. I'll give us all a moment of silence.
Let's bow our heads one more time, church, and let's be united in prayer. As your word says, Father, in Ephesians 2, verse 4 to 5, but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Thank you, Father, for your words of grace that may continue to strengthen us in the midst of our struggles. We come to you today with nothing, Father, perhaps thirsty and longing for your word. With this, we pray for your mercy to touch every longing heart, every burdened soul in need for your blessings and your strength this very morning. May your grace touch your people and may we undeserving sinners be able to be worthy of raising praise to you, receiving your word and enjoying you wholeheartedly this very morning. Thank you, Father. This is our prayer. And in Jesus' name only, we pray and give thanks to you. And everybody, let's say amen. With joy, church, let us lift up our voices and also rise from our seats to praise our Lord. Together, let's open our hearts and our eyes to sing our hearts out to our amazing Lord. Open the eyes of my heart.
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him, all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to the life in the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let's sing one more time, church.
church, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for the Word of God. And let us be constantly reminded of God's mercy. Maybe we tend to imagine how big and vast God's mercy is. But I believe, and I hope every, each and every one of us believe, that His mercy, His love is far greater than what we can actually imagine. So may this song be a reminder of God's great mercy for me, for you, and for our families. Let's ready our hearts and sing this song. to come up front we will pray for you before you go to Sunday school I invite the teachers and the parents as well wow we have so many today alright 
Let's have a quick prayer for you guys. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to see the kids here and that they are excited to learn your words from the Sunday school. Please bless them and bless the teachers as well so they can really deliver your word and these kids can really hear your words. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, off you go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Miss me already? <laughs> well, it's only two weeks, right? Anyway, uh, may I say happy Chinese New Year to those of you. Kung si sin yen, for those of you who are celebrating Chinese New Year. I hope everyone is feeling good today, uh, especially if yesterday you could spend your time with the whole family and maybe receive uh, some ang pao, yeah? Or maybe for the parents, they lose some money, like a whole lot of money in a day, right? Well, I hope everyone is having a good time, yeah? So uh, this is the second week of our family month. And I do hope we are all excited uh, and looking forward to the to the fourth week of this month as we are going to close the family month and celebrate uh, Rek Dharamo's anniversary, 11th anniversary for to be exact. Now, this week we are going to talk about godliness. Uh, godliness starts at home. Now, I'm quite sure when we're talking about godliness, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is that it's related to activities uh, around church stuff, right? When we talk about godliness, uh, it's probably related to church stuff or spiritual discipline. Like, for example, reading the Bible, going to Sunday service, serving God, or Try living with all honesty in our everyday lives, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. We uh, relate, we associate godliness with certain activities, right? Those are true and those are things that will show our godliness and at the same time train us to be more godly or holy. Now, besides activities that we associate with godliness, we often associate certain people uh, to be godlier than others. Uh, besides activities, we associate certain people to be godly, to be looking godly. For example, the majority of people would agree that spiritual leaders, pastors or uh, the like, are godlier than a CEO, right? Spiritual leaders seem to be godlier than CEO of certain companies. As not to mention if the CEO is accused of tax evasion. We will see that the spiritual leader is better than the CEO, right? And sometimes, sometimes I can find uh, people uh, thinking that doctors are considered godlier than beggars, right? <laughs> Doctors are seen to be godlier than beggars. I don't know why. Older people often perceive to be wiser or godlier compared to the younger ones, right? Now, uh, people who stay married are considered more holy than those who chose to have a divorce. Married woman seems to be better than widows. That's what the society thinks. Uh, it doesn't necessarily what I think, right? Now, what we're about to talk today is that godliness doesn't necessarily relate to activities uh, like what I have described, or it doesn't relate to a person's job or title or whatever it is. It doesn't, uh, it starts, godliness starts first and foremost closer to us, and that is in our home. Our role in the family. Godliness is trained at home and should always be displayed at home. Church and all other areas in our lives are just 
extension of the godliness that we have already practiced at our home. Now, before we go deeper, let's pray before we open our Bible. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you have uh, led us up until this time. Uh, thank you for the songs that we have praised to you, Lord. And now that uh, we are about to listen to your word, really uh, dive into your words. Please bless us. Bless me as well in my limitation, Lord, so that I can really deliver your words and really the congregation can hear your words and be grown uh, and grown maturely in your word. Speak to us, Lord, for we are ready to hear. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. I invite everyone to open our Bible from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. 1 Timothy, the letter of Paul to Timothy, first letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. I will read verse 3. Uh, if you would please uh, read verse 4. And we will read together verse 5. I will read verse 3. Uh, please continue with verse 4, all of you. And verse 5, we'll read together. All right? Let me start. Honor widows who are truly widowed. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents. For this is pleasing in the sight of God. Together, she who is truly a widow, left all alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. Thus, the word of God. So what is happening uh, here in our text? The spare cope uh, is still part of Paul's instruction to Timothy on how to handle the congregation. Last week, I believe we learned about how to give encouragement to older people. Uh, and now we read here that Timothy is asked to honor Widows, who are truly widows. It's interesting that Paul gives a disclaimer, who are truly widows. I mean, what's wrong with just widows, right? I mean, uh, are there fake widows? <laughs> and why do we have to honor widows and how do we do it? Those are the things that we're going to talk about. First, we'll see what it means to honor widows. And secondly, we'll see what we can do to show our honor. Right, let's begin. Before we can understand what it means to honor widows, I think we need to understand who are widows that Paul talked about here. Uh, I want to invite you to imagine a life in the first century. Imagine we are all living in the first century uh, under Roman Empire. Right, where the society back then is a patriarchal society. Well, it's not really hard to imagine, though, because uh, in 2024, today, we still live in a patriarchal society in Indonesia, right? <laughs> uh, men are still considered more superior uh, than the ladies, the women, right? Well, back then, in first century, th there is no... Uh, Blumada emancipasi. There is no feminist movements and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, men are considered superior uh, in all aspects. Right? And in this kind of society, imagine that you are a widow, where you are a woman, when well, it is you are considered inferior, and you are left alone. You don't have anybody else to rely on. Uh, when, you, when you still have your husband, you have your husband to rely on. When you have your family, you still have your family to rely on. But now that you are all alone in this patriarchal society, you are really considered no one. So this is what's happening in the first century, uh, uh, the, congrega the congregation that Timothy serves. Um, the widows who are living in Timothy's time, is considered no one. 
they have no standing in the society. They, they have no appeal in a the society. They, they may be left with nothing by their late husband. And they might not have a family. They're, they might not have a kid or grand, grandkids. So it's going to be very, very hard for them to, to have anything, to have a living, or even start a business just to make themselves uh, enough, right? Now, the ones who are truly widows are the widows that seriously don't have anything. No money, no appeal in a society, and no honor for them. Now, what Paul said to Timothy here is Timothy is asked to honor them. I mean, it's an interesting word that Paul used the word honor. Uh, we honor people, we usually honor people who are above us, right? In, a, uh, in our work, we honor our boss, right? We honor uh, the leader in the church, right? We honor our parents, right? Uh, we don't honor, sorry to say, people who are below us, right? Do you honor uh, beggars? I don't think you, you would honor beggars as you would honor your boss, right? Uh, uh, it's for, for some people, just giving some money to beggars is already a form of honor. But for most, for, but for others, uh, just to look at the beggars is already the highest honor that they can have, right? Most people, most people, it's not that I encourage this or this is the right thing to do. Most people would look down on people who are below them. They would not honor people who are below them. And uh, coming back again to the first century society where, uh, of patriarchal society, where widows are considered no one, so it's only reasonable to think that widows will not get the honor that they deserve, right? So this is what Paul is saying to Timothy. You need to honor the widows, those who are truly widows. You see, I think uh, the reason which will help us more easily to honor someone is by changing the way we look at the person. The way we can honor someone is by changing the way we look at the person. If we look at the person, uh, if, if we see someone is below us, we might not respect or honor them. Uh, if we see someone as higher above us or equal with us, we, we tend to respect or honor them. It's, we need to value other people based on who they are, not just their condition. Say, for example, uh, if I, were, if I were not a pastor, say if I, if I were not a pastor, and when I come to Sunday service, I was wearing a suit and tie. Pakai jas rapi, gitu ya. And I do that every Sunday where I am not the pastor. Some people would find me too high up because of what I'm wearing, right? Uh, because we tend to value someone based on what is attached to that person. Uh, like what I explained earlier, that was uh, the suit that is attached to my body. We don't, we don't see the person underneath the suit, right? Uh, it's, it's another story if you see me wearing a worn out clothes, right? Uh, there's a uh, robek robek mungkin baju saya gitu ya. If you met me wearing worn out clothes, there's a big chance that you wouldn't think of me as a pastor, right? Maybe you would consider me as a beggar. <laughs> now, uh, I heard a story from a pastor a few years ago. So he, he was a pastor in a small church. The congregation was so small, uh, they couldn't afford uh, renting a house for the pastor. So the pastor had to stay in the church. Uh, and because they couldn't afford a housing for the pastor, they, they also couldn't afford hiring a caretaker for the church. So the pastor willingly volunteered himself to clean the church. After all, he's living there, right? 
uh, it's only natural for him to clean up right his place now comes monday uh, no one in the church just just this pastor by himself uh, and the pastor decided to clean up the church i mean after a sunday service it's, the church is a mess and he's too tired to clean up on sunday so comes monday he cleans up the church while he was cleaning up the church he's uh, sweeping the floor mopping the floor and everything there was a passerby uh, outside the church she uh, she was so sad she she looked so sad uh, she was she looks so troubled and when she saw the pastor while cleaning up she asked i'm so glad that i run into this church uh, i'm in so much sorrow may i meet the pastor here to be prayed for she was uh, asking the pastor right notices that the pastor is still cleaning up uh, and the pastor said oh right i'm the pastor here please come inside when the pastor said that the lady comes seriously because because uh when when the pastor was cleaning up the church he doesn't wear his collar or his tidy clothes right he's wearing whatever it is maybe he's wearing his pajamas or maybe uh his kutang <laughs> so he he isn't considered a pastor while cleaning up the church right he's considered oh he's the caretaker so that's why when the lady heard oh i'm the uh, the lady heard that he said i'm the pastor here she become confused right this is the the thing that is happening in our society we see people for the outsides right we don't see people for who they are we see from their outward appearance no wonder we can sometimes look down on people and sometimes we can even look down to widows so before we can honor widows or anybody else we need to see them as who they are they are god's creation they are god's image that way when we see them that way we can learn to honor them we can learn honor people to honor people that we met so uh all right we've understood that what it means to under uh, what it means to honor widows which is to see them for who they are right uh widows are just a status it's not their identity i'll explain it later we'll continue to with the next point and that is what to do to show our honor here paul distinguishes two kinds of widows uh here paul distinguishes two kinds of widows first there are widows who have a family whether children children or grandchildren and second widows who are by themselves now why the distinction why do paul need uh, why does paul need to distinguish the two well simply because their needs and their role in the family or, or in the church is different now uh let's talk uh one by one uh, each each type right starting with the first type so towards the widow who have a family the family needs to show their honor uh honestly i almost miss uh, i almost made a mistake while reading first four let's read first four again but if a widow has children or grandchildren let them first learn to show godliness and so on and so on when i first read this first i thought that them refers to the widow but uh well i'm an indonesian uh I'm an Indonesian, so I don't naturally see the subject differences. There was a singular widow and plural them, right? Uh, now, when I uh, read it carefully, I find out that them refers to the children or grandchildren. So I thought it was the widows that need to show godliness, when in fact, when in reality, uh, it is the family. It is the responsibility of the family to show godliness. to honor their moms or grandmothers who are now widow okay you see as a community as a church we can only do so much for widows sure the church needs to honor the widows by taking care of them however at the end of the day it is the family's responsibility to honor the widows in the family 
I mean, if you consider church as a family, and fa well, family is an extension of the church, right? At some point, at some point, church will have its limitation when it comes to giving a hand to widows. That is why, as the family, they are the ones who are supposed to honor the widows in their family. This is one thing that we can learn from Paul, from what Paul said to Timothy. Now, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to honor widows, especially when it comes to families that have widows in their family? Now, I may not speak from uh, my own experience, but uh, I could imagine, I could imagine a mother who has spent her entire life uh, taking care of the family and finally left all alone. Her husband has passed on and her children have moved out of the house and started a new family. She might, while, when she was still, she's living alo all alone, she might lose her sense of purpose, right? This could happen to uh, mothers who are left alone. No, no more husband, no more kids. She might lose her sense of purpose. And when she chose, or maybe when her son or her daughter called her to stay with them, uh, I think she might try to take care of the family. She might try to take care of the son's family or the daughter's family, right? Just to get her sense of purpose again, right? And when she does that, when widowed mothers, widowed grandmothers do that, it could lead to conflict in the family, right? Imagine this. If you are uh, uh, a head of the family, let's, let's say I'm, I'm, a head, I'm the head of the family now since, since, I'm, uh, since, since I'm already married, right? I, I imagine if my mother decided to stay with me and decided to do things her way when I have said, these are the things that will happen in my house, I think I would get infuriated, <laughs> right? <laughs> or maybe, or maybe if I could take care, uh, if I could put up with her, probably my wife wouldn't be able to put up with her. So that, that's why we, always, we often found conflict between, between, what is it, Mertua and Menantu? <laughs> right, the in-laws are always in conflict, right? So that's what would happen. Uh, it would be kind of hard for us to honor our widowed mothers or grandmothers, right? If the situation were to be like that, it would be hard for us to honor her. And for that reason, we need to learn to honor her. And uh, I think Paul has carefully selected his word because he literally put the word learn in verse 4. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their household. We might need to force ourselves a little bit to honor her. Because naturally, we as adult kids might, fe might feel that our widowed mothers are too controlling for our own family, right? We need to learn. And from this little exercise, we are actually pleasing God. It is pleasing in the sight of God. Who knew that honoring widowed mothers has implication to pleasing God, right? <laughs> and, and this is actually what Jesus did, right? This is actually what Jesus did. According to biblical records, it is believed that Joseph has passed on by the time Jesus started his ministry. If you read the gospel, the Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John, uh, you wouldn't find Joseph uh, accompanying Jesus on his ministry, right? You, you often found Mary while Jesus is doing his ministry. So it is uh, believed that Joseph has, has passed on uh, when, Jesus has started, when Jesus started his ministry. Uh, and I think that when Jesus is accompanied by his mother, I think it's a form of honoring uh, it's a form of Jesus showing his honor to his mother, right? He himself is fulfilling the Torah. Honor your father and mother. And if we want to take it further, if we believe, if we believe that our parents are given from God 
and they are God's representative, despite their shortcoming, the respect and honor that we give to our parents, and in this case, widowed mother, can be understood as honoring God himself, right? As God's representative on earth, honoring our widowed mother can be understood as honoring God himself. After all, our mothers never demand anything from us, right? Uh, I think it is her right to receive some return, some return from us, and that is our honor. Simple thing, but not so simple to do, right? Right, so that was the case for the widows who have a family. That was the case for the first type of widow. We still have the second type of widow. We talk a lot about widows today, right? <laughs> now, not all widows have children or grandchildren. Some are literally left all alone by themselves. Mereka sebatang kara. Uh, I think it's a better word in Indonesia compared to English. <laughs> now, these are the ones that are truly widows. As I've said before, living as a widow in a patriarchal society in the first century is really, really hard. And it's not easy for them to find a living. For them who are truly widows, Paul wrote in verse 5, She who is truly a widow, left all alone, has set her hope on God. And so on and so on. Notice the word, has set her hope on God meaning that they've set their hope on God from the past up until now and still going to continue to do it, right? Uh, they, they set their hope on God in the past. Today, they still set their hope on God. And tomorrow, they, they will still set their hope on God. And in what way they've set their hope on God? In supplications and prayers night and day signifying that this is a continuous thing that they do, signifying that this is godliness that they do. Now, the thing is, prayers and supplication doesn't always talk about asking God for things, okay? Uh, if you pray to God night and day, you don't always ask for something, right? It means that you are having a relationship with God. You are constantly communicating with God. You tell God what you're feeling, whether you're happy or sad, whether you're disappointed or loved, uh, and so on and so on. So what Paul wrote here is talking about how the widows have started a relationship with God and they continue to do so. This is showing their godliness. And what's amazing is, uh, as a widow, I would imagine uh, they are uh, helpless and since they have no one to rely to, they have no one to rely on, they can only rely on God himself. In their limitation, in their weaknesses, they rely on God. I mean, for, uh, for those who are married, uh, just to make this clear, for those who are married, uh, we don't always ask something from our spouse, right? We stayed with our spouse night and day, but we don't always ask something from them, right? You don't know, uh, you tell them stuff too, right? Oh, uh, I'm happy that you did this. Oh, I'm sad, I'm feeling this. Oh, we have a, there's a good show that we need to watch, right? Or lately, uh, couples can discuss their political views on who to phone, right? I know, I know uh, there are uh, husband and wife that have different uh, votes. Uh, well, that's their problem, right? And this is what happens with the widows. They have constant relationship with God. They have deeper relationship with God. They have nobody else to turn to but God. Now, how does it all relate to us? We're not all widows, right? How does it all relate to us? What do widows have to do with our lives? Because probably we'll be widower. <laughs> so, I think, firstly, what... Uh, what we could look at the widows as, uh, we could look the widows in their helplessness. Aren't we, sh don't we share the same helpless helplessness as the widows uh, when it comes to living in God, right? We often found ourselves uh, making, the, making the same mistake over and over again, leaving us feeling helpless, right? The, the widows feeling helpless because they have nothing, right? 
uh, we might feel helpless because we are feel uh, because we feel powerless uh, and from the power of a sin, right? We we share the same helplessness as the widows, and to see the widows, to learn from the widows, is that we can learn from their godliness, right? Uh, and we could evaluate our relationship with God, actually. Do we treat God as our genie in a bottle to fulfill our wishes and needs? Or do we treat God just like the widows did? They really pray, they really uh, give supplication to God night and day. They treat their relationship really, really well. Not just to ask something, but to really have a relationship. Uh, how, how is our relationship with God? You, you see, honestly, I can sometimes still treat God this way. I can sometimes still treat God like my genie in a bottle, right? Because honestly, I fear that if I'm angry at God or if I complain to God, I fear that He's not going to care for me again. Or I fear that if I'm grateful for something, I'm grateful for the thing itself, not grateful for God who has given it to me. I, I, I sometimes have that kind of fear. But as I'm preparing the sermon, I'm reminded again that uh, this is not the kind of relationship that I should have with God. Uh, what the widows have displayed is the kind of relationship that I should be doing or having. Now, lastly, is the way we honor widows. Not all of us here uh, are living with our widowed mothers and probably not going to. If ever comes the time, will you learn to honor them? It's going to be hard, trust me. From my imagination, I could think it, it's going to be hard. Now, one thing that I can share, though, uh, although I'm still having a hard time doing this as well, is that if we can't honor our widowed mothers uh, because they have hurt us or they are too controlling for us uh, and we can't show our honor to them because of that, those things, honor them as fellow believers. If we can honor with our widowed mothers, our, the widows as our mothers, honor them as fellow believers. Remem remember that they are widows True, but that's just a status that is given to them. It's not their identity. They, are, they become a widow because of their circumstance. Their real identity is that they are our fellow believers. They are God's children as well. They are God's image as well. If we can honor them as widow or mothers, start honoring them as fellow believers of Christ. At least that's the starting point. If you could go higher, that will be even better. And as Christ has poured his love to us, let us display Christ's love to widows and to others, to other people as well. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence before we close in prayer. Father, we are so grateful for the words that you have given us today, Lord. We are reminded again to see godliness as the things that we do in our home, Lord. And that, is, that starts with a simple act of honoring our widowed mothers or the widows that we probably met in our everyday lives. It's not always easy to honor widows, Lord, because we, we often perceive them uh, with certain things. But today we are reminded that we need to see them for who they really are, that they are really God's, your image as well, our fellow believers as well, Lord. Teach us to really have this humble heart, Lord, so we can really honor them. Teach us as well so that we can uh, learn their godliness in our daily lives, Lord. We, we realize that we are just as helpless as the widows that is described in our text today, Lord. And in our helpless, 
helplessness, Lord. Teach us so that we can rely on you always, Lord. Thank you for the words that we have heard, and may the Holy Spirit uh, keep this word growing in our hearts. We're still going to move on with our worship service. Please bless our worship service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Welcome to Reform Exodus Community. This is our church. This is our home. Our warmest welcome to all of you, especially to those who join us for the first time. If you'd like to connect with us or if you need someone to pray for you, please don't hesitate to call these numbers. Church, it is now time for us to give our offerings. You may give it electronically via bank transfer to the account number displayed or by scanning the QR code displayed. If you choose to give cash, you may put it in the offering bag behind you at the end of the service. We give our offerings not to expect God's blessing. We give because He has given us His blessing. Let us give with a grateful heart. Register yourself through the link here to get more information. Let's get connected in our discipleship group. We have one in our each local church. Do take note of the day and time for each group. Let's support one another and grow together as the body of Christ. These are all for today. Happy Sunday and God bless you. So good morning again, everyone, uh, and I would say welcome to those of you who are visiting for the first time. We are so glad to see you all. And if this is your first time coming here, uh, you are entitled for a free coffee downstairs. Please do take it. Or you may order any, uh, something else if you don't like coffee. Uh, we have other menus as well. And thank you for the uh, for those. Uh, who have served us this morning in praise and worship and also in the uh, multimedia. So there are um, two things, I guess, that I would like to announce, to add for this announcement. Firstly, is that I just want to remind you that in two weeks, uh, we're going to celebrate our 11th, an 11th anniversary, yeah. Uh, 11th anniversary of Rec Dharma. So we will have a combined service at 10 a.m. Uh, it's going to be bilingual. Uh, and we will have potluck as well. So, uh, and I'm glad that I'll be joining the potluck as well. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, on 25th of February, we're going to have a combined service. Uh, and don't forget to bring some food, right? so we can really enjoy it together. And secondly, uh, I think the second announcement that I would like to say is that I'm, I'm just going to say it in Bahasa Indonesia because it's regarding pemilu. <laughs> Jadi, uh, rekan-rekan, bapak, ibu, saudara yang terkasih sebangsa setanah air, <laughs> karena yang akan memilih hanyalah orang-orang warga negara Indonesia, uh, pastikan tanggal 14 Februari, uh, pergi ke TPS yang sudah ditentukan bagi Bapak Ibu Saudara. Pastikan gunakan hak suara Bapak Ibu gitu ya. Uh, pilih pasangan calon yang sesuai dengan hati Bapak Ibu. <laughs> Saya tidak akan berkampanye di sini. <laughs> Saya tidak akan kasih nomor berapa nomor berapa gitu ya. Tapi pastikan uh, gunakan suara Bapak Ibu gitu ya dan sedikit uh, tips praktis untuk Bapak Ibu gitu ya supaya kita juga 
tidak apa tercurangi gitu ya ketika nanti uh, menggunakan hak suara kita uh, tadi saya juga baru dikasih tahu sih tips ini gitu ya ketika bapak ibu nanti terima surat suaranya pastikan kalau bisa langsung dibuka on the spot aja gitu ya jadi langsung dibuka supaya dilihat apakah sudah bolong duluan apa belum begitu ya karena Bukannya saya bilang akan ada kecurangan seperti itu, bukan. Tapi kan kita lebih baik mengantisipasi ya, gitu ya. Uh, jadi kalau memang nanti tanggal 14 Februari sudah datang ke TPS, sudah dikasih kertasnya, ada lima kertas suara, uh, dibuka aja satu-satu supaya kita tahu, oh memang ini masih masih bersih dan nomor satu dua tiganya tidak tertukar fotonya, gitu ya. Namanya juga tidak tertukar. Kalau nanti tertukar loh, kok yang ini namanya di nomor yang ini, nah, ntar kan jadi pusing. Gitu ya. Kalau kayak Kalau terjadi hal-hal seperti itu, kan ada petugasnya bisa langsung diomongin gitu ya. Dan kalau memang bingung siapa yang harus dipilih gitu ya, bisa tanya saya. <laughs> tapi nanti, tapi nanti, nanti ya. Nanti setelah ini, nanti kalau di sini saya bisa dicekal ya. <laughs> dan, dan lagi, dan lagi. Dan lagi besok, besok Rek Nginden, di Rek Nginden akan ada acara Rek Kongko jam... tujuh malam gitu ya akan ngobrol-ngobrol seputar pemilu gitu ya yang pasti uh, mendorong kita semua untuk tidak golput gitu ya dan memberikan hak suara kita gitu kalau bisa ikut besok silahkan ikut gitu ya kalau bingung mau ngobrol sama saya setelah ini yuk ayo gitu ya <laughs> nanti kita tinggal ngopi aja sambil ngobrol ya Saya tidak akan mengarahkan, karena ini sudah masuk minggu tenang kampanye, saya bukan tim sukses mana-mana gitu ya. Saya cuma akan memberikan perspektif saya ya. Itu saja, uh, that's, that's what I can say uh, about pemilu. Uh, enjoy our democracy party yeah, in, on 14th of February. Once you have uh, voted, maybe you can go to the malls because we, you, you might get promotions, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there are discounts uh, for those who have voted. Or maybe if you want to celebrate Valentine's Day, yeah, go ahead after voting, right? So, that's all what I can uh, share to you this morning. Let us close this worship service. I invite everyone to stand as we are going to close in prayer first. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the service that we have held this morning. Thank you for the songs that we have praised. Thank you for the words that we have heard as well. And thank you for the opportunity for us to collect our offerings. We pray uh, so that the offerings can be used for your glory, Lord. Give your wisdom to the people who are managing it. And we know that what we give is nothing compared to what you have given us but we want to give it uh, with a grateful heart Lord and today before we end our worship service uh, we want to pray for a couple of things firstly we want to pray for the elections that that we're going to uh, have on 14th of February we pray so that you give us the wisdom in choosing the right leader for us for Indonesia Lord we pray so that the whole election day could go smoothly could go safely Lord Uh, there are no conflicts happening after the election we pray so whoever it is that is chosen and whoever it is that is not chosen can really accept it uh, with a humble heart with a big heart Lord And we, we pray so that the leader who is going to be elected, whoever it is, we really want to surrender them to you so that they can really uh, lead our country to a better one, Lord. And we also want to pray for the, your ministers, Lord, for your pastors who are serving in all of Indonesia, Lord, uh, who are serving in a big city or maybe in a remote areas. We pray for them. We pray for... Uh, their needs as well Lord it may not be easy to continue living uh, especially for those who are in the remote areas it's probably not easy for them but we want to pray we want to give them to you we know that you are a God who will take care of them as well as you have taken care of us Lord and may them continue uh, serving you faithfully Lord wherever you have put them thank you Lord for the chance 
that we have prayed for these things and afterward we're going to leave this building and continue with our lives please bless us in this day and also in the week that we are going to have uh, we want to give our glory back to you lord by singing our doxology sent back into the world receive the benediction the Lord bless us and keep us the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace from today until forever and forevermore amen you may be seated you may take a moment of silence happy Sunday and God bless you